I'm Kevin Durth. I'm Maple Run Unified School District, which includes BFA, St. Albans, Northwest Career and Technical Center, Fairfield Center School, St. Albans Town Educational Center, St. Albans City School, and Collins Pearly Sports Complex. Last week, I shared with you the reopening guidance and the enrollment form for you to select the learning option that best suits your child and your family. The deadline was August 11th. However, if you didn't have a chance to complete the enrollment form, your child will automatically be assigned to the hybrid learning model. You can always reach out to each school if you need to change your child's enrollment status. Today, I invited more people to the weekly update. You'll meet our assistant superintendent, all of our principals, and the district's COVID-19 health coordinator. They will provide some answers to questions many of you have been asking. All of their responses and more can be found on our COVID-19 resources website. First, I'd like to introduce Bill Kimball, our assistant superintendent. He oversees human resources, curriculum, capital projects, and information technology. He was recently the interim BFA high school principal until we hired Brett Blanchard. Bill? Thanks, Kevin. Hello, everybody. I'd like to talk briefly about a few questions some of you have had. The first question is about the first day of school. As per the governor's announcement of an executive order, all Vermont schools will begin on September 8, 2020. Next, I'd like to address the primary decision-making drivers for reopening schools. The decision drivers for reopening include health and safety, equity, and instructional schedules. It is paramount that we are all able to provide as much face-to-face -face instruction as possible. However, we must do so in a safe manner following the guidelines established by the governor's reopening phases and focusing on our most vulnerable learners. I'd also would like to explain the drivers for changes in instructional modes, such as the number of in-person instructional days. We will continue to follow the governor's phases of reopening schools, as well as the guidance provided by the Agency of Education, the Center for Disease Control, and the Department of Health. Our district continues to work closely with our partner school districts in the Champlain Valley area, as well as we have many operational aspects that cross school district boundaries. Now I'd like to hand it over to Angela Stebbins, the principal of St. Albans Town Educational Center. Thank you, Bill. Hello, everyone. Some of you may be wondering how the Maple Run School District will provide clarity for students and parents regarding what the school day will look like if they've selected the hybrid model. Each school will provide drop-off and pickup times that will need to be followed. Please see communication from each school for these important times. High school students will be given a course schedule that they will need to follow on their in-person and remote learning days. In terms of pre-K to eighth grade schools, in-person days, uh, students will report to their homerooms once all the health screenings are complete. This is where they will spend much of their day as the cafeteria and gymnasiums will be closed. Unified arts schedules are being developed so that teachers will rotate to different classrooms to provide art, music, and physical education instruction. When feasible, students will be brought outside for PE and for recess. However, playgrounds will re remain closed during school hours. Breakfasts and lunches will be delivered to classrooms where students will eat. During remote learning days, students will be given assignments they will need to work on and submit using the learning management system that has been set up for them. Teachers will also be in contact during virtual, the remote learning days. You will hear more from each of your, your children's schools and teachers as we move forward. I would like to now introduce Joan Cavallo, the principal of St. Albans City School. Thank you, Angela. So many families have been wondering if their child is gonna be able to switch between hybrid and virtual. We wanna support our families and we know that this is a really hard choice for you. 
um, we've spoken with several families that are really not sure what they want for their children. And they've asked if they pick hybrid or they pick virtual and it doesn't work, can they switch? We can and will do that for our families. The only thing we want you to understand is that when you switch, it'll be like switching schools. There will be different teachers and different assignments. So we don't want parents and children switching too often. Um, we will limit that just because it's going to impact the learning if it starts to become too much. So at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Sean O'Dell, the principal of Fairfield Center School. Thank you, Jim. Hello, everyone. I'd like to talk about drop-off and pickup times and the question of childcare. The earliest drop-off depends on the schools your children attend. In the pre-K to eighth grade schools, St. Albans City School drop-off is at 7.30 for buses and walkers and 7.45 to 8 o'clock for cars. For St. Albans Town Educational Center, drop-off is between 8.15 and 8.45 for cars and 8.35 to 8.50 for buses. And then at Fairfield Center School, drop-off is between 8.10 and 8.20. Unfortunately, we don't have staffing available to provide childcare any earlier than our drop-off times. For your children's safety, we ask that you not drop off early, as there will be no supervision. In the afternoons, all students will need to be picked up or dismissed by bus. We do not have staff available for after-school care at this time. At St. Albans City School, pickup is at 2.30 for buses and walkers and 2.45 for cars. For St. Albans Town Educational Center, pickup is between 3.15 and 3.35 for cars and 3.20 to 3.40 for buses. And at Fairfield, pickup is between 2.50 and 3.05. For BFA High School and the Northwest Career and Technical Center, the school day begins at 8 o'clock and ends at 2.45 for all students. They are working on staggered entry and exit times in and out of the buildings. More details will be forthcoming. Students arriving to the high school by bus prior to 750 will be directed to one of three staffed locations where physical distancing will be in place and where they must stay until dismissed for class. Then at the end of the day, unless attending a school club activity or meeting, all students will need to depart the building based on the staggered release times. I'd now like to introduce Brett Blanchard, the new principal of BFA St. Albans High School. Brett. Thank you, Sean. Hello, everyone. We've received questions asking if a student can be placed in a specific group because they have an opportunity to work during the virtual days. Well, all students in the hybrid learning model must be engaged in learning all five days, whether in person or virtually. Attendance is expected and will be taken every day at the start of each class. Students are expected to be in class Monday and Tuesday or Thursday and Friday dependent upon if they're assigned to the blue or the green group. For when the BFA and the Northwest Career and Technical students are at home for virtual learning, they must connect with their teachers by logging in during the start of each assigned class. And you may be wondering if the school will provide your child with a laptop. The Fairfield Center School will send home iPads with children in grades kindergarten and first, and Chromebooks with children in grades two through eight. St. Albans Town Educational Center will provide iPads for students in kindergarten, and Chromebooks will be provided in grades one through eight. St. Albans City School has Chromebooks for students from pre-K through grade eight, and BFA and the Technical Center will assign Chromebooks to each and every student, and the laptops are expected to be assigned by the first week of school. If your child doesn't have access to the internet, there are some options. For example, all three pre-K through eighth grade schools have high-speed internet access in the parking lots for families who need that service. BFA and the Technical Center are working on Wi-Fi accessible areas for students to connect during virtual learning days. And don't forget about our public libraries, as they're another option for finding internet access. And now, my pleasure to introduce Leanne Wright, the director of the Northwest Career and Technical Center. Thank you, Brett. Many of our Northwest Career and Technical Center families are wondering what will learning look like? As you know, career and technical training is typically in-person, hands-on learning. 
Since this year is not typical, we will work very hard to engage your child in meaningful activities when they're not in virtual learning for three days out of the five days. Career and technical training also includes internship opportunities. As we, see, as we receive more information about in-person internships, we will keep you posted. There will certainly be opportunities to connect virtually with the workforce, such as interviewing employers and having employers interview students. For the two days that your child is with us, rest assured that they will be busy and active. We'll also be outside as much as possible for some programs more than others, so please come dressed for any type of weather. Now I'd like to introduce Valerie Lipka, our COVID-19 health coordinator. Thank you, Leanne. So we have some important questions you have asked. One in particular, so what happens if your student or a staff member is confirmed positive with COVID? As of yesterday, there's new guidelines that have been given out by the Vermont Agency of Education in collaboration with the Department of Health. This helps us with regard to what to do if there is a positive case, either with a student or with a staff member. First of all, the member would be contacted by the contact tracing team, which is um, done through the Vermont Department of Health. They will reach out to the confirmed individual and school administration. They will develop a team and develop new next steps. The health department will work with the school to notify students and staff who were possibly exposed. They will convene a rapid response team to collaborate and the school will initiate an investigation which includes the contact tracing. A decision to close either a classroom, a cohort, a pod, or the entire building will be decided upon by the superintendent after consultation with the Department of Health. The health department will examine how the individual was grouped with other individuals. They may recommend closing a classroom for in-person instruction for a minimum of 24 hours for contact tracing. Or if the individual has moved in multiple classrooms, the health department will most likely re recommend closing all impacted classrooms or the entire school for in-person instruction for a minimum of 24 hours while contact tracing is done and infection control measures are made. Currently, right now, the health department is working on developing tools to help support this planning process for administrators when there is a positive case. This will include communication plans for both staff, families, and the community. It is this communication that helps keep our students and staff as safe as possible and able to continue learning in this new environment. I wanna thank you all for your wonderful questions and I will turn this over to Dr. Durth. Thank you, Dr. Durth. Thanks, Val. And thanks to everyone who joined me today. These questions and answers, along with several others, can be found on our COVID-19 resources website. We also know that there are questions about childcare and athletics. The latest updates came from the governor last week, where he announced over $10 million in grants for childcare providers to keep critical childcare operations afloat. We hope this will provide additional options for our families who are trying to balance work and school schedules. The governor also announced that there will be a fall sports season when Vermont high schools open next month, but with changes. We'll share more information when it's available. We have a strong community and appreciate the hard work of countless people who are doing their best to keep our staff and students healthy and safe. If you have comments or questions, please visit our site by going to maplerun.org and click on COVID-19 resources. You can also send an email to covid19 at maplerun.org or leave a message at 802-370-3966. Please note that this dedicated telephone number will only receive messages. There's no live person answering the call. However, we do have a team of personnel monitoring the emails and voicemails. You can also view our video updates at our MRUSD Outreach YouTube channel. We thank you for your feedback, patience, 
and understanding while we navigate this situation together. Goodbye.